Hello, and welcome. For today's video, we are gonna talk about the honorable Oregon grape, Mahonia aquifolium. So for those of you who haven't met this plant, here it is. And how to identify it. Oregon grape is an evergreen shrub. You can find it very commonly in the woods here in the Pacific Northwest. One plant can grow up to five feet tall and four feet wide. So here we have the leaves up close. We can see that the leaves are pinnate and they have these spines along each leaflet here, almost similar to that of holly leaves. And then here we have the berry cluster coming in and they'll switch from this green to a darker blue by the end of summer, early fall in which we'll also start to see the leaves transitioning colors from a darker green to a nice maroon color. Okay, so I want to show us another shot of Oregon grape. We are going to make medicine out of this branch. So here we start to see a nice life transition for this plant. In the beginning of spring to mid-spring, we start to see these little yellow buds with just a tinge of pink start to form on Oregon grape. And then they unfurl into these cute little yellow flowers. And then at the end of summer, early fall, they'll start turning into berries, this magnificent blue color. And so the plants will usually have yellow buds starting to form in the beginning of the spring, just with a little tinge of pink. And those yellow buds will unfurl and they'll turn into these magnificent yellow flowers. And by the end of summer, early fall, we start to see those flowers turn into these magnificent berries that are blue. And the berries are edible, but they're very sour, just like with a tinge of bitter. But for today's video, I wanna draw your attention to something that lies a little bit deeper. Let me peel back this inner part we start to see that magnificent yellow color and that, that yellow is because of the alkaloid berberine. So when we make medicine out of berberine, we collect the inner bark, we collect every part of the plant, including the roots that contain this alkaloid and that's what we make medicine out of. So, berberine. It's an important antimicrobial, and it's useful in lowering blood glucose, hyperlipidemia, and it acts as a bitter digestive stimulant. But before we get into that, it's important to know that berberine is not just found in Oregon grape, but it's found in a lot of plants from all over the world. It's found in Coptis chinensis, golden thread. It's found in Hydrastis canadensis, golden seal. It's found in Berberis vulgaris, Barberry. It's also found in Berberis aristata, tree trimmer. So these plants have been used by cultures from all over the world, and there's a really rich history of using this compound in these plants as medicine. So a little bit of the history. We've now found that on the clay tablets that have been excavated from the libraries of ancient Mesopotamia, dating as far back as 650 BC, we find writings about barberry and its use as medicine as a blood purifying agent. As far as 650 BC, it's amazing. 
And in Asia, they've been using berberine-containing plants, especially in the berberis genus, for over 3,000 years in Ayurvedic medicine, but also in Unani medicine and traditional Chinese medicines. And they've been using the stems, the barks, the roots, to treat a variety against a variety of microorganisms, such as viruses and bacteria, um, but also against various fungi, elements, and protozoa. So let's get into the modern day research. A meta-analysis done back in 2015 by Lan, Zhao, and Dong et al. to see the use of berberine as a treatment against type 2 diabetes and hyperlipidemia found that in the use as a blood sugar lowering agent in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, we found that berberine with lifestyle intervention tended to lower the level of fasting plasma glucose, postprandial glucose, and hemoglobin A1c more than lifestyle intervention alone or placebo. And there was no statistical significance between the use of berberine and that of the oral hypoglycemics that were included in that research, which was metformin and glipizide. In lowering lipids, it helps lower total cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL, as well as increasing HDL, your good cholesterol, when combined with an oral lipid lowering agent, such as a statin, it had a stronger combined effect than when the drugs were used alone. In the naturopathic medical world, it's a very strong antimicrobial agent or a very effective antimicrobial agent in a lot of gastrointestinal infections, such as gastroenteritis or H. pylori of the virulent form. And it's used in small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, SIBO. Also, berberine acts as a digestive bitter stimulant. It helps improve blood flow. So when that bitter flavor hits our taste receptors in our tongue, it sends a signal down to the liver. It sends a signal down to the liver, which then sends a signal to the gallbladder to help release bile. And so that's indicated in situations of inflammation of the gallbladder or gallstones that might be due to a congested liver, cystic duct, or bile duct. And so looking at the research is very important, but something that's just as important to me in understanding Oregon grape in its entirety is to study the native people who use these plants, the native people who were native to the land in which the plants were also native to. Because these people and these plants live in symbiosis with each other. They evolve together. So the Flathead Indians would crush and clean the plants and they would use it as a topical antiseptic. So that becomes very helpful when you go out and you're in battle or you're in a hunt and you have a wound, you have your first aid kit for you right there available. If only you know how to use it. The indigenous coastal Salish people would use the entire Oregon grape plant for dyeing their baskets and their wool. And it's said to make this dullish yellow green color. So food as medicine, medicine as food. The Kootenai Indians would mash the berries in a bowl, and they'd add a little bit of milk, a little bit of sugar, and be a tasty dessert. And if you remember, those berries are quite sour. So some of the Coastal Salish people would mix in other berries found here locally, like salal berries, to sweeten it up, and they would make jams or fruit leathers. So now you know Oregon grape just a little bit better. I hope that the next time you go out into the woods, See if you can kind of sharpen your awareness. See if you can recognize the plant. And I think in this way we become much more active participants in our ecosystem. We know how to use the plants around us for food, for medicine, for different kind of textiles or basketry materials. Um, and that way we're more in a symbiosis and we can have more of a reverence for these plants too. Just knowing what they're capable of. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. If you're interested in me going more into the science, going deeper into the mechanisms of actions of these plants, getting more into the research, let me know. I'm happy to. I'm happy to make another video to kind of nerd out with you all. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.